Hey everybody, hi, it's Denise with Lazy K Mountain Homestead. Well, today we are still at our countdown to Christmas and we are going to make a cake that is actually a eight letter dirty word. <laughs> I bet you can already guess what it is. <laughs> fruit cake. Yeah, I'm going to make it. Now, Willis and I love fruit cake. We can't wait for the Claxton fruit cakes to come out in the grocery store. We go get them and we make a big pot of coffee and we sit down and enjoy a few slices of that fruit cake. And I know there's a lot of you closet fruit cake lovers out there. So I hope you'll watch the video. <laughs> um, this is a upside down fruit cake. So it's a little bit different than your traditional fruit cake. And it's got some booze in it. So I went and got Maker's Mark bourbon whiskey because I think that's top of the line. Um, not much of a drinker, but I knew, do know what Maker's Mark is. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, create a brown sugar syrupy kind of topping like you would a pineapple upside down cake. And we are going to make that over at the stove and we're going to put it in our Two pan. I've got it lined with some um, parchment paper. You can use foil. You can use whatever you want. And I did go ahead and grease it with some spray uh, oil. So I've got that ready. Now, if you don't want to use a two pan, you can use a, a nine by thirteen. I believe that'll accommodate this cake too. So it's up to you. But it is an upside down cake. So I thought that two pan would be pretty. So when I flip it up, it'll have the fruit on top. Now, what I'm going to use. Um, I, I do have some traditional holiday fruit cake candied fruits, which I know y'all are, some of you are saying, oh, gross, but actually I like it. Actually, I love it. <laughs> I've got uh, some dried pineapple, candied pineapple. I've got some candied dried dates. Got some craisins. And then I've got a cup of chopped pecans. So that's going to be the goodies for here. Oh, and it does have a little bit of molasses. Turn it around so everybody can see. Muddy Pond Molasses. This is our local uh, Mennonites that make this every year. So I've got that. It's got brown sugar. It's got all kinds of goodies, spices in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the stove, and I'll bring you with me. Okay, so I'm over here at the stove. And what we're going to do is create the uh, candied sauce that you're going to put on the bottom for the top of your cake. So when you flip your cake, it's going to be fruit on the top, just like a pineapple upside down cake. And what I've got, let me go ahead and turn this so you can see what I'm doing. I've got a medium saucepan here and I've got one stick of butter that I'm melting. And I'm going to get that all melted. I don't make it go over the side. I've got one tablespoon of light carol syrup. I'll go ahead and put that in there. And to that, we are going to add one half cup of light brown sugar packed. And that's what it means when you're packing it. You're actually packing it down. So we're going to put that in there. I've got all my fruit on top. And this is about two cups. And I'm just going to mix it around. And what I've got in here is I've got the uh, candied pineapple. I've got chopped dates. Now these were... Um, Cold dates, but they were pitted, so I went ahead and chopped them up in the food processor. And I went ahead and I uh, just pulsed a few times for the craisins because I wanted them to be a little bit smaller than what they are in the package. So, and it also brings out the, the flavor. All right, let me turn this down to medium. I'm going to go ahead and get this all mixed. And we are going to bring this to a rolling boil continuing to stir it until all of the sugar is melted in there. And this is going to be so good. 
Now, as far as the alcohol, we're going to put two tablespoons of the bourbon. And that is going to be cooked out. So really, you're just going to have the flavor. And I am going to do that after this sugar is melted down. And then I'll put the candied fruit in there. And then we will pour it in here. So I think it's going to be really fun. Now, I... um. Haven't made a fruit cake by myself ever, and I'll tell you when I I've been married before, and my grandmother-in-law, Grandma Griggs, wonderful lady, she was uh, just awesome. But anyway, she was my ex-husband's grandmother, and she made the most wonderful light fruit cakes. The the cake itself was a light color and she would start in July and she'd make two big ones because that was that was the uh, culture. She grew up in Buckingham County, Virginia, and she married at a young age and that's what she was taught and that everybody loved the fruitcake at Christmas. So she would wrap them up in cheesecloth, keep them in the freezer, and once a month she would take them out and she would uh, douse them with alcohol <laughs> i think it was alcohol and orange juice uh, it's been a long time ago nearly 40 years but anyways i would help her do that and it was a lot of fun and i learned so much from her she was a, a farm lady and she outlived two husbands and she died i believe at age 90 and she was just a wonderful lady you know there's some people that are in and out of your life but you're a better person for it and I believe that she certainly was okay I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down so you can see it's kind of like a caramel there you go see it's nice and thick so what we're gonna do to that is we're gonna add all of this fruit now I hope you guys will stick with me on the and watch this and I hope you'll give it a try because you know the reason that people had candied fruit back in the day was that's how they could actually uh, keep the fruit uh, other than canning it they would candy it and then they could um, keep it for the winter time and make their fruit cakes or mincemeat pies and things like that and I realize that's a whole different lifetime away from where we are now but it was the way that people lived you know and it, it was a way to uh, be self-sufficient and um, I believe in that wholeheartedly I think it's wonderful I dry my I'll buy pineapple and I'll dry it and and the apples will dry them and we'll put them in baggies or put them in the um, food saver and also have you guys saw that gadget I had and I can put it in where I can um, take all the air out of a ball jar without canning it and you can put dried fruit in there too so that's a great way to do that okay so now we to this we are going to add two tablespoons of the bourbon so here we go my dad loved a whiskey sour so dad up in heaven this one's for you <laughs> and you can hear it i'm going to turn it on low and just gently stir that around and that will loosen it up and get it a little bit more liquidy so when we pour it in here in our pan it'll be all around there and this is going to be baked too so it'll if you're worried about the alcohol it's going to be cooked out of this all right guys so what i'm going to do now i've got my pan here and i am just going to pour this in let me see if i can um sorry i there we go not set up real well here there we go i'm going to pour it I think you can see it from that side and I'm just going to kind of go all the way around here. Oh, it smells so good. 
the sugar and that bourbon. Mmm. Yum. Okay. So we are just going to go ahead and set that aside. And you can see that in there. It really looks good. Let me see if I can taste it, what it tastes like. Mmm. Looks really good. Wow. All right. Mmm. It's really good. <laughs> I'm going to move over to the island and we'll start with the cake. I came over here at the mixer and I thought I would go ahead and use that because it does have butter and sugar and I want it to be nice and um, blended well. So I've got a half a stick of butter salted and then I've got um, one half cup of white sugar. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that and then I'm going to add one egg after that's mixed well. I don't know why my camera light is going in and out, but I apologize there. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and add the egg because I have had it mixing for a little bit. And I'm going to scrape down the side. This uh, cake has four different spices in it. And it's only a half a teaspoon of each spice. So it's not going to be uh, super super spicy, but I think it'll be enough to give it a nice cozy flavor. It kind of uh, reminds me a little bit of a, um, if you ever watched um, A Christmas Carol, when the Cratchits are making the Christmas pudding, it kind of reminds me of this. Except I'm not using port wine, I'm using whiskey. <laughs> okay, that looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it this uh pan over here to the island and we'll get mixing. I've got just my sugar and my butter and my egg in here. You see how nice and whipped that is and that's what you want. Okay so what we're going to do now is we are going to add the molasses and it's one third cup of molasses and of course the recipe will be in the description box. I'm gonna put that in there. Now that'll kind of make this a darker Batter, but that's fine with me. It's not a lot of molasses. And we are going to add one fourth cup of orange juice. Now, if you guys don't like want the orange juice, this will give it a really nice rich flavor. You can all just add warm water or apple juice or even pineapple juice if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that around. Get that all nice and blended well. Smells good. All these nice, to me, these are all old fashioned flavors. And I think it's just nice to keep traditions alive, you know? Okay, and we do have a little vanilla to add here. And that is one half teaspoon of vanilla. Not much. All right, set that aside. I can mix a little bit. Okay. And what we've got here is, um, let me see, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I have got one teaspoon of, no, one half teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And remember what I told you about the baking soda. You don't want to have a heaping teaspoon of whatever, the, or a quarter teaspoon, whatever the recipe calls for. You want to be very precise in your soda. Because that can ruin a recipe in a heartbeat. It's a great leavening agent, but boy, it's got an awful taste if you put too much in. And I had an ex-mother-in-law that, she was a good cook, but every year she would do that. That was crazy. Okay, now what I'm going to do to add to this flour, I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my spices. Now what we've got is a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. This is almost kind of like um, maybe a gingerbread. A half a teaspoon of allspice. 
Now, for me, I don't mind if I uh, go a little overboard on these spices because I love them all. And that was a half a teaspoon of cardamom and finally a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. All right, so we'll go ahead and put them over here. Now, it does call for a half a teaspoon of salt, but I went ahead and used salted butter, so I'm not going to put the salt in there. But you do need salt in your baking because it does enhance the flavor. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and mix all these spices up in my flour. I could have done it in my sifter, but I wanted to make sure you guys saw everything. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and mix a little bit of this in there. Add the flour a little bit. And with my dough whisk, make sure y'all see what I'm doing. My dough whisk, I'm just going to mix it up. And if you hear that noise over there, that is the dog trying to eat the cat food. All right, we've got that where we can add a little bit more of the flour. You want to just do a little bit at a time so you incorporate it well. Now, before I add the rest of my flour, I am going to add a, a full cup of chopped pecans. And in they go. Now, I didn't toast them because I just wanted to have a nice light flavor of the pecans or pecans, as Willis would say. Right, let me set that over here. I've got my oven preheating at 350. Now this is going to bake for anywhere from 35 to 40 minutes. And it is a thick batter. And what we are going to do is just, with a spoon, we're going to drop um, the batter a little bit at a time onto the, the candied fruit. Okay, let me go ahead and get that over there. And I've got everything I need in there. It really smells yummy. So here is our candied fruit. Still warm. And I'm going to go ahead and get a spoon. And just add... A little at a time just making sure it covers all of that fruit kind of like when you do dumplings <laughs> and I do have this sprayed with um, oil so once I get it all in there I can kind of mix it level it off a little bit I hope you guys will try this recipe and not be afraid of fruitcake. We, uh, over the last several years that I've been alive, I know people have really given fruitcake a, a bad reputation. But it's just a cake with fruit in it. So, some people say, oh, I don't like that candied fruit. Well, you know, if you don't like the traditional candied fruit, like I put in the topping, you can just go and get any kind of fruit that you want. I would suggest a a dried fruit like the um, um, pineapple. You can get cherries. You, anything that's kind of dried, it will have a nice sweet flavor because that's what drying does. It brings all that flavor. Intensifies that flavor when you're drying it. Dehydrating does the same thing. Okay, well, here we go. There is our beautiful fruit cake. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven. Like I said, anywhere from 35 to 40 minutes. I'll check it at 35. You want to make sure your toothpick or your skewer or your butter knife goes all the way through and comes out clean. So we'll see you in 35 minutes, possibly 40. Hey, guys, it's 35 minutes later, and the cake is done. I went ahead and I tested it with my um, skewer and it came out clean. So let me show you 
what it looks like. I'm not going to take it out of the pan yet because it is hot. I don't want the uh, fruit to fall off. But isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful color? So I'm going to let this cool. And I'm going to let it cool completely before I take it out of the pan. And then I'll show it to you. And we will have a taste. See you in a few. Hey guys, well I'm back with the cake. Now I'll tell you, it's not the prettiest uh, cake in the world. It's very old fashioned and it is really delicious. And I'm gonna give Willis a piece. I've already had a piece and I thought it was great. But here it is. I made some uh, frosting with the bourbon. I just took one uh, cup of uh, powdered sugar, just a teaspoon of the bourbon, some vanilla and some um, heavy cream and just mixed it together until it was the consistency that I wanted. And I put it in one of these and I just uh, went across it and did a really nice drizzle, put some pecans on top and a few of the little candies. So I hope you like it. Hope you'll try it. And I'm going to cut a piece for Willis. And he's not going to be on camera because he just got home from work. But hopefully we'll be able to hear if he likes it or not. <laughs> Here you go. Wow. Is it good? It really is. Oh, great. Well, listen, you have a good evening from Lazy K Mountain Homestead from me and Willis. We'll be back tomorrow with something more. Bye. Yeah.